with the states and our DRG members. Today we speak from uh, Ufungamano. And Ufungamano is like uh, the center of our, all our meetings. We made our statement in understanding and appreciating what's going on, including the challenges of our COVID-19, which all of us are part of and are challenged to live accordingly. So our statement is about constitutionalism, not just constitution, a scorecard on the constitution of Kenya, which we celebrate this month as the 10th year of our constitution. The law epitomized by the constitution is, glue, is the glue that binds the citizens of a nation. When the glue is weakened, the nation falls apart, falls apart, and people suffer. Appreciating this, religious leaders in Kenya have been at the forefront of protecting and defending the rule of law and adoption of moral values. We draw much of inspiration from the words recorded in Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 18, and to 19, and it reads, I quote, Also it shall be when he, the king, sits on the throne of the kingdom, that he shall write himself a copy of the law in a book, from the one before the priest, the Levites, and shall be with him, he shall read it all days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord in his God and be careful to observe all words of this law and these statutes. And I also quote for the Quran, the fourth surah, of the fourth surah, chapter one, number 135. For you who believe, stand firmly for justice as witnesses of Allah even though it gains yourself or it's against your parents or your kin, be it for rich or poor, Allah is better protector to both of you. Kenyan's aspirations. For more than three decades, Kenyans pushed for and fought for, and some even died demanding for a, constitution, a new constitution for our beloved nation. They inspired for a constitution, excuse me, they inspired for a constitution that will ensure justice and peace, security and liberty for all. A constitution that treats all Kenyans as equal, provides equal opportunities, and ensures equitable distribution of resources and responsibilities. Kenyans inspired for a better government, national cohesion, and stability of our nation. Have these been achieved? It is in this in mind that we have come to Fungamano House to celebrate and commemorate the 10 years for the day the constitution was in from Mogalte, and to draw a scorecard in, of, on its implementation. We want to realize there may be a weakening of accountability. The, the dialogue reference group is appalled in the, in the, in the downward spiral of descent of into the madness of uncontrolled corruption being witnessed in our nation. This trend is immoral and is contrary to the teaching of God and we fully condemn it. The information in the public arena indicates that the country has received more than 190 billion Kenya shillings to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. However, there has been great lack of transparency and accountability in the expenditure of these funds, which has led 
credence to accusations that most money has been misappropriated. It is uh, inconceivable for us as Kenyans and can sit and plot how to steal money meant for to save the life of Kenyans. The reports of corruption touching on the COVID-19 funds are a condemnation on the executive and the parliament who have sworn duty to protect the lives and the sources of Ken resources of Kenyans. We remind that every time you abate corruption by failing to exercise your oversight mandate, you are breaking your oath of office. Procedurally, we note the corruption in Kenya, corrupt, that corruption in Kenya is perpetuated by bureaucratically instigated opacity in public finance manifested by one, lack of information and procurement. Three, two, lack of details on expenditure information provided to Parliament. Three, lack of, uh, lack of comprehensive information portal accessible to the public COVID-19 funds. And four, lack of information on acquisition and distribution of COVID-19 related materials. To remedy this, we call upon the Ex Excellency, His Excellency the President, to cause the relevant ministries and departments to, one, provide to the public details of all funds received through concessions, donations, grants, and loans, and earmarked to the COVID-19 pandemic response. And number two, to provide to the public details, expenditure, information on all funds, donations, earmarked for the COVID-19 response. Number three, publish names of companies and beneficiaries of COVID-19 procurement processes, social protection programs, and distribution of testing kits and personal protection equipment acquired by the government through the purchase of the dona or donations. Number four, immediately institute prosecution of all who have in been implicated in the misappropriation of COVID-19 pandemic response funds. On their part, we call all members of parliament to end their perpetual partisan and ethnocentric bickering and execute their constitutional mandate of oversighting national revenue and its expenditure. For once, rise up and protect the lives and interests of Kenyans as it is required by your Article 94 of the Constitution 2010. Readiness for 2022 elections. We are greatly concerned that politically, Kenyans are exactly where it was in 2015. Though we are near, we are near 21 months from the general elections, we do not have the functional elections management body. The constitutionally required election of ordinaries review has not been undertaken. The voters register has not been updated. The personal procurement, procedural and philosophical shortcomings that happened in 2017 general elections have not been addressed, meaning that they will come to play once more and political actors are blatantly whipping up ethnic emotions while enforcement agencies watch helplessly.
While we remember the mediation we took on tw in, in 2016 to resolve the crisis touching on the Independent Elections Boundaries Commission so as to safeguard the 2017 general elections, this is a role we passionately hoped and prayed no one would ever need to be played again. We therefore call upon the Parliament to fulfill the promise made in 2016 and put a place in place necessary amendments to the uh, Independent Elections Boundaries Commission Act to provide for a replacement of commissioners who leave office and to safeguard appointment of commissioners from political party influences. The leadership and the operational crisis at the IEBC must be brought to an end without further delay so that preparations of, for the 2022 general elections are undertaken by a body that elites public confidence that is can deliver free and fair polls. On the other part, we call upon the National Police Service, the Kenyan Commission on the Human Rights, and the National Cohesion and Integration Commission to enforce the law against any persons who engage in hate-oriented political mobilization. Our Constitution, as it celebrates 10 years, today, Kenyans are marking 10 years since the Constitution was promulgated. In the lead up to the referendum 2020, some uh, institutions represented here in the DRG advise Kenyans not to vote for the draft. Nonetheless, we accepted the results of the referendum and publicly committed to support the implementation of the Constitution, awaiting appropriate time to address the issues they have had reservations about. Over the last 10 years, we have monitored the implementation of the Constitution, Kenya 2010, and partly appreciate different institutions that have embraced the new Constitution dispensation. We have, in this meeting, undertaken a detailed review of the implementation of the Constitution and have prepared a chapter-by-chapter -chapter scorecard that highlights the achievements that pending are uh, pending work. We will share this with the public. In fact, a copy is available as for this for these members here. We nonetheless wish to highlight the following overall concerns regarding the implementation of the Constitution. Number one is lack of edu civic education and weak in calculation of the constitution and constitutionalism in the life of Kenyans, leading to weak demand for citizens for fidelity or for to the constitution. Number two, though Kenyans embraced the devolution as a means of reducing over lordshipness of the central government, the executive is currently growing back on the gains and it's grow growing larger every day. The oversight role of the parliament has been severely eroded reducing both houses to mere rubber stamps of the executive, while the judiciary constantly claims that it is being intimidated. The national values espoused in the Constitution have not been integrated in the national life. 
And Kenyans continue to suffer from the effects of leadership that lacks ethics and integrity. Number four, constitutional commissions have largely underperformed with accusation that appointment to their boards are largely made to reward political party cohorts which reduce their commitment to the mandates of the bodies. Number five, elections are still divisive, violent, expensive, and mostly lack transparency and fairness. Recognizing this, therefore, we reiterate for a better Kenya, we require a greater sense of constitutionalism, not necessarily different constitution. With this in mind, we recommend, number one, A, all citizen, to all citizens, please familiarize yourself with the Constitution 2010 and actively engage in oversight in its implementation. We especially encourage you to hold and recall a the recall clause as you will safeguard your whole, to hold members of parliament and county assemblies to account when they, they derogate the Constitution. Please determine in your hearts to forthwith reject all corrupt leaders in the future, now and in the future. To the President and his executive, uh, uh, the executive, deal decisively with the corrupt and uh, the corruption we see and, and, and you promise to do, and resist the temptation to manipulate other arms of government. And we especially urge you to complete the process of appointment of the Port 1 judges nominated by the Judicial Service Commission to ease and to make court act passed on many cases that are still lying and waiting for many years. Push for a culture of constitutionalism, morals, values, and ethics to take root in our nation to replace the current culture of corruption, greed, and lawlessness. To the Parliament, we uh, recommend that to enact all the outstanding laws required to ensure constitutionalism takes root. We especially bring to your attention the need to pass a law to actualize the two-thirds gender rule which has been taken quite a long, already 10 years now. Number D, to judiciary, we ask you, we urge you, to enact all outstanding, to, to deal decisively with impunity and weed out judicial officers who engage in corruption. All holy writings, speak strongly against corruption on the part of judges who are meant to uphold justice. We strongly recommend immediate commencement of the recruitment of the new uh, Chief Justice so as that we can proceed with the process which is affected which is does not affected by political emotions as we get closer to 2022 elections. To our county governments, as we appreciate the, the devolved structures, and many of you are doing very well and doing very working very hard, we state, we say to you, stop devolving corruption and focus on service delivery, knowing that Kenyans supported the establishment of the counties so as to bring services closer to the people. In conclusion, we as DRG members, remembering the Constitution of Kenya 2010, we recognize it that the supremacy of God and all creation, as we commemorate the 10th year 
of the implementation of the, uh, this constitution, we request each Kenyan to take a moment and pray to God with all the words of our national anthem that O oh God of all creation, bless our land and nation. Justice be your shield and defender. May we dwell in unity, peace and liberty. Plenty be found within our borders. God bless Kenya. God bless our country. God bless all of you who are listening and watching. And God bless all of you who are challenged by this disease pandemic. We pray for you and especially our doctors remind ourselves of the big responsibility caring for our sick. God bless Kenya. Thank you and God bless you all. Tazungumza kwa Kiswahili. Kuna mvutano kuhusiana na tetesi za Kiswadi. Jina? Steven from Ebru TV. Kuna wale ambao wanasema wanavalio chitumiwa wajiwa waondoke kwenye nyati kwa zao. Na kuna wale wanasema bado uchunguzi kufanya. Msimamu wenyu kama yunguzi wa dini. Kuhusiana na mambo ya COVID-19. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kuhusiana na mambo ya COVID-19. ラプタニアンセトパンアクサワニ。いや、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、
this area. It, it's eroding not only our public image, but nationally, internationally. Now we are at the risk of losing funding for very important areas, especially health. You had USA say we most likely are thinking, and others and others of all the same. So in other words, you cause many people suffer for your action of greed. So that's how I can say. Maybe somebody else would like to add it. But um, in terms of school, schools, we know the challenge about schooling, uh, opening schools. I'm not a spokesman for schools, but from where I sit, the church has suffered a lot in terms of loss of revenue, which runs schools. Our teachers have gone home. They don't have salaries because we could not pay, pay them, we cannot pay them. Why are we dependent on the, on the fees of the schools? And therefore, without that, we do not are not able to carry on. So there's a lot of suffering, and that's how we were asking the government to see if they can compensate our teachers also because they teach public children. We don't have children of the school, of the, of the public schools, of the public schools and of the private schools. These are Kenyan children. Their parents pay their what you call the taxes and any other uh, uh, taxes that are uh, uh, required to pay. So, how are we living it? First of all, we, we took recognizance of uh, the disease and we understand where we come from protecting the children, protecting the families, and so on. And therefore, there is a logic in terms of what the Minister of Health has, has recommended. Therefore, we decided to comply. But it's a big strain on the parent, on the children themselves, you know what has happened, on uh, the institutions. Right now, publicly, I say this. What is happening to those buildings? Millions and thousands of buildings within the country. The buildings are lying fallow there. Some of them are not in any other use. The buses that are telling these kids are sitting. The many of them are not doing anything that we are calling meaningful. And therefore, there's a lot of uh, what I call uh, uh, degrading the facilities we all share at schools. And even the teachers themselves, most of them are really in big pain because they don't have the salaries. So opening will be a great thing because we pay the students, but it should be open with uh, slowly like we did the churches. I would have loved to have done like the churches we did. You start by a few, then you come to another, then you go to another, but this is my personal opinion. We didn't discuss that, but however, I know that's where all of us share as Kenyans. And we want to say poorly to all of you, the children who are listening or watching, the parents who are going agonizing about this, we also agonizing. We understand the nature of this disease, but as somebody said, some say the biashara, come on, biashara, via COVID, the I know many people have suffered and died. So, it is a concern for all of us. It is necessary to consult, but also not to be so afraid that we don't do nothing. It's good already. We see the children we asked to go to certain places. The schools are more safe, if you ask me. If you ask me, the schools are much safer. There are more toilets in that place, there are more playgrounds in that place. So if we started step by step, class eight and whatever other places, whatever the classes, exam classes, start with those, finish with them, let them go, another group. And then you make them follow the protocols required. Distancing, masks, and sanitizing, all this. They will learn, they are kids, that's part of the, the, the game. That is there. The issue of the third gender, third gender rule is a typical concern. But I think here, we must encourage our ladies, our women, our uh, and, uh, the female folk to support each other. Because you see what happens, who votes the men in? is the women. Because in every place, the women vote as in men. Eh? So uh, we cannot refuse to vote the men. But remember, you find one of your own, support them, and support them very well. They, that can be able to pass. If it was a nomination, you'd have to change now the constitution, which is not necessary. 
I believe if that is doable, if people are conscientized, and we are very good leaders, women leaders, in our different constituencies. Last but not least, I leave the BBI to kind of here to deal with it. Uh, uh, the issue of uh, uh, breaking. Canon uh, takes up the issue of EBI yeah, and uh, what are we proposing? Can also mention something on education. Thank you very much. Um, now, the, the issue of corruption, the Archbishop has spoken about it. We are not happy with the number of events in the country. And we have called on the agencies and the authorities that are there to take action because Kenyans are expressing their tiredness on the level of public funds. On the issue of the BBI process, as you all know, the religious leaders that are standing here have been at the forefront asking questions on how we can improve the governance of the country. And the BBI, the, the DRG, or the Dialogue Reference Group, we went around the country collecting views and asking Kenyans what can be done so that we don't have a vicious cycle of violence every election. And we came back and got uh, a spot that and there were some areas that Kenyans wanted amended so that then there can be an inclusive government so that nobody feels left outside of government in the country. As we all know, the 2017 elections were contentious and they were even nullified by the Supreme Court. So those questions have not been answered and we believe there are some areas that require some policies to be changed, some laws to be changed and some amendments including amendments uh, to the Constitution. So we have been supporting the BBI process. We have not seen the final report. So when the final report is released, we'll be very glad to meet here and uh, call you and tell you our position on the issues that will be raised or proposed as amendments to the Constitution by the BBI process. On the other issue of um, of, of the, the, the gender rule, I think the Archbishop has answered. I think the parliament itself has not done enough to consult the experts and to consult among themselves and to bring parliament to order so that these questions can be uh, answered. And therefore, we still have a gap in our law of some of the requirements for the implementation of the current constitution that has not been carried out. And we believe that it is leadership that is supposed to solve the problems of the people. And this is something that we believe can be resolved. On the matter of, um, of schools, of opening of schools, as the religious leaders, we have also, we own a lot of schools, and we have, we are key stakeholders. We have been uh, consulting with the Ministry of Education, and we have participated in the committee. Uh, we don't feel that it is yet so safe for us to have the schools open, but that is a process that we are consulting with the government and the experts and the Ministry of Health. Uh, the minister announced that maybe as the numbers of COVID cases go down, there could be safety in returning back to school. That is something that we are working with. As religious leaders, we do have places of worship that are lying idle during the weekday. We are considering how we can partner with the government so that some of those places can be used because we know when children return, they will require a lot of space. So we have provided uh, the schools, but also if our places of worship can be used as places of learning. We are okay to work with the government and other stakeholders to provide those places so that children learn. What we are asking government is that we do not want our children to lose one year. So we have to, once COVID is over, we want a process to be put in place so that our children go back to school and recover the year 2020 which has been uh, disrupted uh, by COVID. That is possible. It has been done before. Some of the people who are standing here, they were in crash programs in the uh, education system before, when it before was introduced, or when there was a double intake in the universities. Some people used to sleep in the common room and other places. So it, it is not something that is impossible. I think once we put our heads together, we want to encourage the minister not to be pressured 
but to sit down with the real stakeholders and discuss. And then we can open schools and recover the year 2020. Thank you very much. But how you do it individually, wewe mwenyewe na family yako, ni tofauti kidogo. So, jambo hili la COVID-19, lilitokezea hapo mwanzo mwanzo sana wa mwaka. Kupapu kianza 2019, na ikawa tunitangazwa kabisa hapa in March. So, kuna wachache walio sema kwa hakuna. Na walipo ulizo kwa nini hakuna. Maka sema hatu japima. So what is the answer? No, you know what it, that means. So, si juu yeleweta na kuzi si yana watu wakule hali yao wa muri na kama kuna mambo fulani sisi unakita familia yako unaitunza familia yako kuingara na maagizo ya daktari ata ukienda kwa daktari ata juu zitikuwa na ata ukonjo wote ule na kwa maamuzi daktari wambi kula hi au kunywa hi. When you get family, you can get a family, you can get a family, So that is the, 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 the technical advice of the Talamo and Akweleza, who are Muslims in Wako. CCC to a Shambulia, to a Chemu, but you are the Dakar of Tokia. But to CC, if you put a Jan and a kid from Yatano, I'm seeing that he's a million of the Tango family na karibu elfu thelathini ambao waliambukizo wa na kadhalika lakini sasa sisi tunapima na sio watu wanapima wote ni wachache ambao wanaonekana sasa wanaadhirika au wana anaweza kuwa wanakuhusiana na watu so let me kusema we comply and encourage our people to comply i better be wrong kwamba nilinawa mikono mno na kuna covid lakini my people are right Kuliko nilihuza na huku watu wakapariki. Because now kama wakipariki na anza kwa zika kwa nimejificha, sasa hapo naona na mabu kuna mosi sasa. So this is a decision by the head of state. We allow them to make their decisions. But the common wisdom told us there is a need to look at this disease because it's there. What's happening in the US, what's happening in many countries, and I have a personal experience from people I know who have been calling me from hospitals, from families, and so on. It's here, unless you tell me there's a Tanzanian type or a Kenyan type. But here we are. We must protect our people, we must protect life at all costs, and therefore it is the responsibility for the Ministry of Health, the public health officers, and all those who are around us to tell us what not to do or what to do to avoid uh, infections. Mihai. I think there's some lunch. Where do you stop?
Good, good, good. Good, good, good. 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 Good, good.